got this awesome new device where you can. Are you in the basement today? Yeah, I moved down here because we're. Oh, um, holy fuck! Is that? What? Is that mother in the background? Have you unplugged your USB stick? Dude, that's just the desktop. I just, it's just the oh, desktop fuck. image. Jesus <laughs> just, Christ, you almost gave me a goddamn fucking I am, heart attack. I haven't been down here Whoa. for so long. <laughs> Sorry, dude. She's gone, dude. I, I, I haven't seen her. I haven't seen her or been influenced by her. Well, you for, know what? It's interesting. Months. I've been doing some. I've been doing some research, and it's not. It ain't. It's not just us. Hey? Like, she, like. I've been poking around. She hasn't. She, there's been no sort of forced entries onto um, uh, satellites. Uh, no, yeah. no hacks that could be attributed to her. She's. I mean, she she usually leaves a bit of a signature when she when she does work, and there's, oh, yeah? just, there's been nothing. Really, I, she's, it's like she's. It's not just she's gone. She's not like she's not bugging us. She's not bugging anybody. Yeah, there must be like this bubble or something going on where it's just blocking her out for some reason. Yeah. And, and it's uh, weird, but but it's 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 not again. It's not just affecting us. It seems she's not bugging anybody. Yeah, it's like she's gone totally. How is that even possible? I don't know. Maybe she's just laying low, or maybe it's no fun if we're not watching. Right. <laughs> so speaking of hacking, I um, I. I, I found my old iPad. I wanted to I wanted to download some comics for another um, little bit that we were going to talk about later on in the episode. But uh, I wanted to load up some comic books onto my iPad and then use it as a dedicated um, comic book reader. Yeah. It said that it had an update, and the latest update was 5.1 something. I can't remember if it was 2 or whatever. So I can't get 6 on it. Because the iPad's just too old, and that's when I um, that's when I decided I, I might as well just jailbreak. At this point, I mean Apple's stopping support, I guess, for the first iPad. Hmm. It is so good, and they, and just the tweaks alone that you can do that hmm. these people have figured out. There's there's one thing where I uh, obviously I can't load Siri because uh, this is the older version. You can sort of emulate that. Uh, with Google, with the Google search option, you know the speaking into it, right? And, and and so you press the you press the home button, and instead of Siri, you're getting the Google version, the Google search version. I I don't know how many times I've other than my name that it got com- horribly wrong. Everything that I said to this thing, just it knew exactly what word, and I started swearing at it, and it would actually put the little asterisks on the swear words. <laughs> it, is, it is amazing. You could change the little logos at the top. You can you can say how much system memory is available. Um, you can change the little logo instead of the carrier logo. So I put a little Android guy in there. <laughs> you could do all these like little tweaks to it, and you can have the the unlock screen. Unfortunately, the slide to unlock can't be removed. I'm sure mm-hmm. someone's probably figured it out, but I haven't been able to find it yet. Um, and you can put little Android um, unlock screen things on it all these you can there's a, a, a great program called quasar which will allow you to have windows open on your iPad oh wow yeah it's just all this great stuff and I'm like why didn't I do this earlier I should have did it right when I bought the stupid thing so definitely yeah, cool did it. yeah should have did it did done did it well it's interesting you're talking about um, Google talk because I I'm a I'm a big Google fan, as you know. Yes. But today I'd like to initiate a new feature mm-hmm. called A2 Google. A2 Google? Yeah. Like the letter A and the number two? No. Like the famous Julius Caesar quotation, A2 Brute. And you, Brutus. Did they did they ever make it into a movie? That... Yes, they did. What movie was it? Julius Caesar. Oh. Anyway, so what's your feature? I told you. A2, Google. Uh, my problem with Google right now, I mean, I've got a, I've got a couple hey, little hey. niggling things. But what's your problem, Google? What's my problem? Uh, Google Drive. The former, formerly Google Documents, so the the documents part of Google Drive, 
Yes. It has the search results. If you open up your Google Drive, the default view is called My Drive. Yep. I'm looking at it right now for our notes. And it, it shows, it, it just seems to be really random in terms of what it shows. Like there's stuff that shows under there that where I'm not the owner. So stuff you shared with me, other people shared with me, they appear under My Drive. Share with me? When did they add that? Wait, now let me finish. I'm getting to that. So under My Drive, there's a few things that are shared with me, but not all of them. Then you click Shared with me, and it's supposed to show all the files that are shared with me. Oh, yeah. To be in chronological order, except that for me, some of the, there's stuff that's shared with me that I'm not the owner on that doesn't show up there. I had this problem with Google Music as well where I would add albums and it wouldn't show up until I actually did a search for the album and then on top of that I found the album I had to add it to a playlist in order for it to actually stay in my like home page on it yeah so I don't know what's happened recently but I mean they've, I, they've kind of dropped the ball on this I don't understand what feature they think they've what feature this is supposed to be because right. I'm sure the excuse is like, no, no, it's a feature. It's a it's feature. Supposed to, that's the, that's expected behavior. But I can't. Why would they change? Why would they change the behavior of how your documents display under well, under Google Drive? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. No. Well, even in the bottom of of this hangout, it says report an issue, but they don't have that stuff on on Google Drive, eh? No, and honestly, oh, I mean that, that. I mean, my other big problem with Google is that the support is basically through like the the help. You go through the help thing, and you you basically post a topic. Mm -hmm. Almost never does anyone actually fucking reply. And if oh, they no. do, what it is, someone will describe a problem. The Google person will reply and basically say, "Oh, either we're working on this, or it's not a problem, or I can't duplicate this." And then like twenty five other people will post under that saying, "No, this is still happening," or. I'm getting this too, or la 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 la, and there'll be never a second reply. There's almost never a second reply from Google. From them? Yeah, no. Yeah. And I've they, only... 90 percent of the time, they fix nothing. So it's just sort of like, why do you like? Ugh, it's it's so frustrating. I mean, I shouldn't complain because you know most of the shit works really well, but there's a few things that are like seriously broken. Or like when they took away offline from Google yeah. Docs, they yeah. had it for a while and then they they broke it and. And uh, yeah, an offline mail, it only functions in this like weird, like you have to access it separately and it's weird and yeah. like what the fuck. Yeah, I mean, I, I still use Microsoft Word yeah. and, they, and they had a feature too where you could synchronize it to a, a cloud service, but I think they've, they've broken that now because of SkyDrive. Right. And so it's going, it's going to their, obviously their cloud service. But it was it was working there for a while for Google Docs and it was really nice. But um, whatever, work offline. Yeah. <laughs> Carry it on your USB stick. <laughs> Where well, what, what year is this? <laughs> I know, I know it's so fucking annoying. Yeah. You know. But you know what's the only thing that's good about the whole thing? What's that? Free. It's free. Does this mean it's time for another installment of Free as in Freedom or Free as in Beer? So, uh, my, my, entry, my entries this week yes, are to do your, with media. Your, your entries. I still didn't know that we were doing this, so... It's a feature. We, we do it. <sighs> we, try, we, we do it. There's enough free software we can do this feature every single fucking time. Okay. So I think, my I, think I have an idea, but go ahead and say yours. Sorry. Okay, so uh, XBMC. Yes. I love Xbox, that. Program. Xbox um, Media Center. So it doesn't have to run on your Xbox. It can run on a Windows box. I think they have a version for Linux. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what it is, is you can actually set it up. If you have it on auto run and you have auto login on your PC that's connected to your TV, you fire it up, it opens this, and it collects... Uh, it it has a, a database, so it, it pulls your files that you've got. It matches them with a with a with a scra using a scraper. It matches them with like a, a movie database or a TV database, and so you have all your TV shows and movies like properly sorted and with by genre and blah 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 with like post the poster of the show or the of the movie all in the background. The What's that? All the metadata. Exactly pulls in all the metadata. The only the only drawback to it, the only main thing that I it, it's it seems to be designed 
by and for people who like hog media, right? Like who hoard it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because so like for me for television, I pull it down, and I watch it once, and then I delete it, right? And the default behavior of this program is to not to when it when it every time you power it up, it does a you can have it do a database check, mm-hmm. but to make it, it doesn't clear the database. It doesn't take out ones that are missing, or at least the old version didn't. I honestly haven't checked on the newest version properly, but I don't think it does. And it's spo- it, I had to make, I had to modify uh, like an INI file or something to get it to do it. And then what it would do, rather than just going, oh, this isn't there anymore and taking it out, it would basically delete the whole database and what? would scan to reload every single thing. So if there was what? a movie that it was getting wrong, so I had... Um, I had this movie called Life Force, but there's two, two or three different movies called Life Force, oh and it would God. load this sort of like exploitation one from the 1960s. So if you're going through my my movies, suddenly there's this one of like a naked lady strapped naked. to a rocket. I know exactly what movie you're talking about. You've seen the you've seen the crappy 50s one with the naked lady tied to the yeah. rocket. Yeah, um, well, tied to the rocket. She's just walking around for like 20 minutes naked. Oh really? But I, I don't I've, have that I've, movie. I've I've gotten. Oh no. No, I don't have that movie. I've got a different. <laughs> I've got a different. Oh, I saw oh, hold that. Hold on, I gotta look this up. I got I a different saw... one called. She is she is gorgeous too. Oh my god, I I was following somebody on Twitter actually, and he said Life Force Netflix now, boobies, and then I'm like okay, and it was like when uh, Netflix started in Canada, and oh my god, she's gorgeous. For like a 50s 60s movie, I was like wow, this is amazing. So she's I'm like just... walking around naked, but what? There's another movie called Life Force. No, I think what it is is that Life Force is somehow in the um, file name. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. What was the actual movie? Actually, you know what? It's not showing up. I'm doing I'm doing a search of my films, and it's yeah. not coming up with Life Force. I can't even find it in the file name. It's okay. basically it's somehow misreading the file name, and it comes up as I don't know what. Yeah. It's something here. No, I can't. I can't seem to find it. It's um. It's reading. It's reading like another file I have, and it's saying it's Life. Life Force, and I don't know. I, I I always I never know which one it is. It also I have Triumph of the Will, and it mm-hmm. reads that as the this um, film about the the woman who made it rather than the actual film. Not Triumph the comic insult dog or insult no, comic dog. Triumph of the Will, the the Nazi propaganda movie that's supposed to be really actually it's really oh, fucking boring. It's like one. watching it's like watching Nazi home movies. I mean, really, it's like. <laughs> okay, but, uh, so yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, moving, moving on. That was uh, so that was XBMC, and I've got I got one more, which is because uh, this oh, is all about media one. this week. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because um, I don't like to actually XBMC. One of the things it really handles really poorly is music, because mm. it it wants to load all the metadata, so it fucking crunks, crunks, crunks through the drive forever, um, and so it's not it's not that great for that. So I've and the th- problem is that I've become really disenchanted with Winamp. Oh yeah. It started to get really crashy, actually, the last couple of years. And it's constantly, like, every time there's an update, it keeps throwing up that fucking nag yeah. screen about updating. And so right, I was right, like, right. you know what? It's really, it's really pissing me off. It's not working. And it was, oh, also, every time I'd open it, because my, all my um, stuff's on a network drive, so I put my machine to sleep, and then I bring it back on, and it takes, like, maybe 30 seconds to find the network drive again. And Winamp would, like, basically blow, its data, blow the brains out of its database every time I did that. Wow, um, which is actually something XBMC sometimes does as well. If the network drive gets disconnected mm-hmm. while it's on or something like that, I can't remember the exact situation, but it'll wipe the database, and you actually not only have to like reload it on the next time, which wouldn't be such a problem, but you actually have to add the path back in because it like deletes. Oh my the path. god! Oh, I so hate that so annoying. much. That is. Um, it doesn't happen that often. It only happens because usually that machine's turned off. So if the network drive goes down, it's up again by the time I. T- but anyway, with Winamp, it would happen when I would lose connection uh, to the network drive just by putting the machine to sleep and bringing it back. Anyway, but on my main desktop, I used this. I I was looking around. I like I need a Winamp substitute. Okay. I need something to take the place of Winamp because I fucking it's getting so shitty. Oh, I got and, I got an idea. iTunes. Fuck off. Um, I tried Songbird for a while, which is like the non-Apple version of iTunes, uh, and it's it's kind of cool, but it was really it's made by the Mozilla Foundation, I think. It's really heavy, yeah. and it's really cra- it was really crashy when I tried it. What about? But the I Android found something one? that's actually it's reasonably new. It's called it's and it's and it's free. It's called okay. Music B. Music B. One okay. word, camel case. Music B. 
All right. And it it basically is like Winamp, except it's better looking, mm-hmm. with even with the default skin. And it is much better at handling metadata, and it doesn't blow its brains out when it loses a connection to the network drive. Cool. Uh, so and it, does it cache yeah. on the fly? Does it cache on the fly? What would it be caching on the fly? The MP3, so that if it if it loses connection to the drive. Uh, I don't know because I've never tested killing the connection to the drive, but it, it basically its database stays intact even if it loses its. Connection. Oh, I see. Yeah, what you were saying before, you don't have to yeah. worry about the database. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, if the network drive goes down, yeah, I expect the music to stop playing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh. you know what I want to see? I want to see a music, a Google Music app for my desktop that allows me to cache cache songs. I think that would they'd probably have to get they'd have to, probably have to look into how they license music if they did that because. <clears throat> well, how, how come they like, allow it on the phone then? It's like Google Maps. Like you can't you you know how you can ca- you, they let you now you can like pre-download the map for like an area you're going to where you might yeah, not have yeah. connectivity. Yeah, we were talking you about that. You can't do that in Japan. Different licensing yeah, for the maps. Different map. So yeah, it might be the same thing with Google Music. We we talked about that in an episode. Yes, we did. Okay. Okay. Um, so anyway. So it's so, real. It's good. It's free. It works. It's it's it much works. better it's than Winamp. Much better than Winamp. Much better than the other Winamp uh, uh, alternatives. And I'm just I want to put it out there because I think a lot of people probably don't know about it because you, we've been using Winamp for years and you kind of are just used to struggling through with Winamp. But you yeah. don't have to anymore. There's an alternative. Cool. Right. I think it's, I don't think it's open source because it's freeware for personal use. Personal use, yeah. So it's probably not open source. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's also a portable version of it, so you can put it on a USB stick. Oh, cool. Useful. I think we can make an exception that the fact that you can uh, put it on a USB stick, kind of like Caliber. Do you ever use that option? I started using no, it. No, I didn't use that option with Caliber. No? I was using it at work and because uh, I wanted to kill some time, and so I would uh, I would put it on a, a USB stick, and it works. It works great. You know. Hmm. But um. Cool. Two good programs there. One of them may not necessarily be open source, but still free. So you have a free as in freedom thing. I do. Um, you're talking about like how you use... I use this this uh, site called... I've mentioned it before, but this snipmp3.com where you can take like a, a YouTube uh, music video and then you can just throw it in there and they'll give you a standard MP3 or a, or a high quality MP3 depending oh, okay. on, you know what you want to uh, uh, listen to. So if I wanted to hear one song, like you were saying, I'd use that. But if right I wanted now. to get... There you go. But if uh, if I wanted to get a full album, what I would do is I would visit my public library, local public library, and uh, borrow the CD and then uh, rip it from there because I'm a bastard. I don't really do that as much anymore because my... Google Music account uh, it was uh, had a limitation of of twenty thousand songs, and I I met that like maybe I don't know months ago. I have so, a I have a small problem 20, with it. It, it requires yeah. Java to be installed in the browser. Oh yeah, is, sorry, I forgot. To, I was actually gonna say that when you were using it, when you said that you were using it, and then I figured. Yeah, I'm not. I I, I anything I re- it. So I figured maybe it worked, but yeah, no. You so I had to, to open a different browser because I refused to. I used refused to fuck up Chrome with. Java. With Java, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I don't use it on that either. I use it on uh, on Firefox. Yeah, as part of my non um, torrent uh, boycott or no torrent boycott, um, I've been able to download music that way onto my computer, like uh, rip it. I've been able to download movies off of uh, YouTube, and people are people are um, are putting full length movies now on YouTube. And not getting caught. I've been able to. I, I watched Looper. I watched uh, this Final Countdown time travel movie that was on there. Wow. So I, yeah, I'm. I'm. But hmm. I've never been. Oh, and, and ebooks. I've been able to download ebooks off of websites very easily. They're all over the place. But audiobooks have always been um, a problem. I, I've never been able to. I know you're not a fan of audiobooks, right? Like you'd rather read the book. I just I because I don't have a player that really can hold yeah. my place in them. Right, that's that's always what uh, the Audible uh, book 
uh, sorry, the Audible app is really good for that. It will hold your place and it will remember your spot. Yeah, uh, I've got I the app. Pay. I just don't have any Audible books. Yeah, I've, I've signed up for so many accounts with them that I have multiple accounts, and then if I wanted to hear <laughs> something in particular, I would just, like, you know, um, re-log in or whatever. So I have, a, I have like, maybe 100 books through them because I did actually subscribe for a while. But anything new, anything new that came out, I wasn't able to get. Well, now there's this, like, website. This is the point behind all of this. I'll lead up to it. There's this one website called uh, OneClickDigital.com, and it works with your library. So I'm, it works in Canada, but I'm not sure if, if it's limited to the United States and Canada and North hmm. America. But you can go in there, sign up for an account using your library card, and it would show you all the recent books that are available on audio format. But it, uh, So you can install their software... But if you didn't want to use their software, like as their player or whatever, you can use Windows Media. So it uses the WMV uh, format. It'll right. create it. It'll it'll create a zip uh, folder or like a zip archive for you to download, and then unzip it, and then you can listen to it that way. So I've been taking advantage of that because I knew that there was a program out there called um, uh, Sound Taxi. Which uh, which will allow you to take uh, WMV files and convert them to wave or uh, mp3 but then you can take that and then you know uh, burn it onto a cd or do whatever mm. you want with it so so it's it's worked it's worked great uh, this is just an experiment i'm just wanted to see i'm not planning on you know doing every single audiobook this way and then you know posting it somewhere i just wanted to try it with the uh, the steve jobs uh, biography cuz <laughs> cuz i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to pay for that book so and uh <laughs> So it's 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 converting as we speak, and uh, I'll who, let who you reads know. that? I mean, who who's the reader on who's that? Who's the reader on it? Uh, Is it John Hodgman? Please tell me it's John Hodgman. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Jobs. So yeah, that's that's kind of the gray area, illegal, you know, piracy thing. But uh, I got a I got a feature. Idea you have now. a feature. At last, you have a feature. Yeah, and and it's 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 called how to make money with talent. How to make money with talent. I figure that we talk about too. We were talking about comics uh, earlier, or I was. I was mentioning about uh, the iPad and how I wanted to make it a dedicated comic book reader. In the past, you could download a, a, an app called Comixology, which was a really good app uh, if you enjoyed purchasing uh, your comics, you know. With you know. money. Well, I mean, you're purchasing comics anyway in the physical world. but You are. Yeah, but if you if you buy it digitally, you know, what do you have to show for it? It's not... Like, you're paying essentially the same for the digital copy as you are for the physical copy. Which doesn't doesn't have any chance of appreciating in value. No, exactly. They've oversaturated the market with the goddamn covers, with the 20,000 yeah. covers that they need to release. That, that, for that, started happening in the, that started happening in the 90s. Yeah. Like, cause everyone would go and collect those covers. Now nobody like gives a shit anymore. Nobody cares. Yeah. I just want to yeah. read this stupid thing. But Star Wars has a new series with the original cat, with the original... Uh, uh, the original trilogy, you know, right. those characters, they've just uh, re, re not re-released, I think they're brand new adventures with Luke and Leia and all those people. In the um, in the actual comic itself, there's a page that you can remove a little sticker and take the code and you can put it on marvel.com or, no, not Marvel, wh whoever's making it, I think it's Marvel, it might be. And you can actually download the digital copy. So here I've purchased oh. the book and then if I don't have time to read it now, you know, like at home or whatever, I could take it to go using the digital copy, and that works for me. Huh. Because I'm going to go and buy the physical copy, you know, to take up shelf space and, and to do like that, that vein thing. That because you, you have a large Canadian week. house. I yeah. love, yeah, I love having my comics like on a, on a little thing there. Comixology is the equivalent to that on my digital devices. It works on Android and iOS, and it's great. Um, now they've opened it up, which is awesome because I have a couple of friends at work that are comic book artists. They've opened it up through this website called submit.comicology.com. I have the link on the bottom. And 
you can now, as an independent comic book artist, writer, whatever, if you put your comics together, um, it doesn't even have to be in print, which is awesome. You just mm. you just submit a PDF, and upon their approval, which I don't really like, but they have to, I guess, scan it for I don't know um, for something. I don't know child hate, porn, hate, yeah, child porn, whatever. So it, more than likely, you have you have a good chance of your uh, product actually showing up along with alongside Spider Man and Superman comics. It's searchable on their site. It's great. Um, the only thing that is kind of iffy is that they take half of the profits and you take the other half, okay? Which seems reasonable because you could submit your whatever. Uh, mm. So in other words, if you if you submit a ninety nine cent comic, you know they're getting they're getting fifty cents and you're getting forty nine cents or whatever. Um, because I'm sure they'll take the the bigger half of that. And they say it's for, you know, like for payments or whatever, and you don't collect actually anything until it's $100. So you'd have to sell 200 comics for two for $1 in order to get $100 back. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. But if you're on the... So if your buyers or whatever, like the people, the potential customers that are going to download your comic are on iOS... And downloading yeah. it through that system, Apple takes a good thirty percent from the cost of the of the of the comic. So they take thirty cents from the dollar, which leaves you seventy cents, and then you have to split that with Comicology. So I'm going to try it. We we made a, a comic book a long time ago with a couple of friends of mine, and mm. I'm going to try to submit it and see if I can sell it and see what oh, happens. Yeah. Cool. So it'll be it'll be a fun little experiment. To uh, to see people download uh, my comic and then uh, <laughs> and then distribute it on online. The other thing that sucks is Comicsology said we can't make a do- we can't make a comic free because uh, Apple's guidelines say that we need to have ninety nine cents at the end of the price. Yeah. Fuck you, Apple. How to make money with talent? <laughs> You just sing, and people will throw money at you, like Amanda Palmer. Hey, hey, let's not knock Amanda Palmer. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm totally not. I guess but, I. But she's she has one of the successful, most successful campaigns. Was it, it Indiegogo most successful? or Kickstarter? I was I Kickstarter, Kickstarter, I think. Right? Um, ever where she yeah. raised one point two million dollars. Yeah, for an album. Mm-hmm. Wow. Isn't her husband rich? You Neil Gaiman? I yes. know who he is. Yeah, I don't think were they married when she did that? Maybe. Yeah, but they probably they probably have some kind of weird prenup because he has an ex-wife. Oh, he does. Okay. Ex-wife and kids, so they yeah. probably have this prenup that she doesn't get it, get to touch any of his money or something like that, and the rest of it can go to Scientology. But I just think I think those two people those two people are doing it right. They're they're yeah. they're incorporating the crowd. Like the idea of crowdsourcing in the right, in a right way, and uh, exactly, I, I I admire both of them. I I I I wasn't bringing up the Amanda Palmer thing to say as a bad thing. I I totally get what she's doing, and she's paid her dues. She's done shit that you know I would never do. Like shave um, off your eyebrows. Shave off your eyebrows and draw and, them in. <laughs> That's <yeah>. crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm Greek, but. They're not that hairy. I don't need to like shave them off and paint them in. I got Groucho Marx ones. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta pluck the middle so it doesn't grow in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for this week. So. Okay, man. I shall bid you a fond peace out, and fuck off. All right, and I will see you online. Wow, that was like a regular one. I couldn't think of anything at the end. Good, because I was getting bored of your lame-ass fake ones. <laughs> Speed round. Name ten things that aren't Skrillex. Um, toothpaste, pizza, lamps, Skrillex. Ha! Ah, fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs>